Stop 12, The Forest Gold Affair. Nathan Bedford Forrest, who had a hot temper, was in a bad mood when he found out Colonel Admiral Streit's Yankee Raiders had captured two of his cannons. He personally blamed Lieutenant Andrew Wills Gould for cowardice in losing the cannons, but it hadn't been Gould's fault. Bushwhackers killed horses pulling the cannons, and the cannons couldn't have been brought out. Forrest signed orders to have Gould transferred out of his command. Gould took it to be a mortal insult and went to Forrest's headquarters at the Masonic Building in downtown Columbia. General Forrest stepped into the hallway to speak with him. Gould said, No man can accuse me of cowardice and both of us live. Forrest believed Gould was about to attack and took out a penknife from his pocket as Gould tried to get a pistol out of the pocket of his linen duster. Gould failed to get a gun out but fired anyway, hitting Forrest in the left abdominal area. Forrest grabbed the gun in Gould's hand and forced it up while he plunged the blade into Gould's left side. Gould ran drunkenly from the front door and out of the sidewalk. As he crossed the street, Dr. Ridley and Wilkes rounded the corner of Court Square. They heard the quartermaster shout, Stop that man! He has shot General Forrest. Dr. realized that it was Gould. He was quickly taken to nearby tailor shop and laid on the cutting table. Forrest said, Get out of my way. I am mortally wounded and will kill the man who has shot me. General Forrest hobbled onto the street and took two pistols from his troopers. He went to where Gould was. Gould saw that Forrest had come in the door and he rolled off the table and went out back. Forrest sent a bullet after him, but it hit a brick wall and ricocheted into the leg of a soldier. Gould only retreated a short way before he fainted from loss of blood and fell into the high weeds behind a row of buildings. When Forrest got there, he realized that Gould was done for. Forrest ordered two doctors to accompany him to the home of a friend, Major Galloway. Doctors finally got a good look at Forrest's wound and saw that the bullet entered the abdomen but glanced off the ileum and passed into the gluteal muscles of the left hip. The wound was just a flesh wound. Doctors offered to cut it out, but Forrest refused and said, No, it is nothing but a damned little pistol ball. Let it alone. Forrest then ordered doctors to take Gould to the Nelson House Hotel and to spare no expenses in saving his life. Forrest said he would pay for everything. It is known that Forrest was bitterly sorry for his actions, but there was conflicting stories about whether Forrest was personally reconciled with Gould. He recognized Gould was a brave man, and he had wrongly accused him. Gould will live for almost two weeks after the incident, but he died in his bed at the Nelson House Hotel on June 26, 1863. He was only 23 years old. Forrest healed quickly and was back in the saddle. His cavalry left the area about a month later and didn't return to Columbia until Hood's invasion of Tennessee in 1864.